having the attitude that I had with the frustration, attitude problems, talking back, it mainly came from the way I was raised. I can say that. Um, no attentiveness, no one-on-one -on -one in the family. Everyone was separate. Um, I just, you know, I was loved, but I didn't feel loved. I felt something was missing, you know. Um, I used to always wonder, am I the problem? You know, I would ask myself that. So for me to have that frustration, anger, and anxiety, I used to always blame myself for it, you know. But I knew that I didn't get love a lot growing up. I got provided for, but the love wasn't there. That, I believe that was most important, that I should have gotten, that allowed me to be that type of person, you know, for me to be so, you know, frustrated, so for me to be so mouthy, someone that talked back a lot. I would say A, B, C, but the end result would be I lost. I lose what I wanted because I did what I wanted to do. You know, having this back talk mentality or doing what I wanted to say, my eyes was open when I lost, you know, money, income, because, you know, when you get written up on your job, you know, you lose that time and that time hurt me tremendously. I was not eating well, not keeping food down. My blood pressure, would, I would pass out, feel like I wanna pass out. I would wanna, um, you know, just not feeling good, just not having no energy, you know. Then I went to the doctor to see what was going on because this was so consistent, you know, every day. I would eat, it would not hold, I would eat, it would not hold. and. I would go to the doctor, and when I went to the doctor, um, they examined me and, and they let me know that I had cancer. I had a lot of back pain, back issues. Back issues was tremendous. It was just horrible back issues. Can't sleep at night, um, wake up with you know the pain, go to sleep with the pain. I would use things to try to relieve it. The spirit just broken because of that, you know, having that diagnosis alone, you know, you think death, you know, you don't, you don't feel excited. You feel that, you know, why me, you know, why this happened to me? I um, found the Universal Church through Showdown of Faith. I was watching it one morning. I was getting ready to go to work and I t turned it on and I saw it and, um, and I was like, hmm. Well, you know, I was kind of curious. I sat down for a while. Matter of fact, I sat down the whole time. And I was like, I'm gonna go visit. Coming to the chain of prayers, coming, you know, drinking the water faithfully. I mean, when I say faithfully, it was faithfully. I'm free of cancer. I'm free from anxiety, depression. I'm free of physical pain. Um, I'm free to be who I am in God. The Universal Church is different from structure, churches such as that. Universal Church allow you to be free, allow you to learn, allow you to open up to the possibilities of transformation. The foundation of my life is the Holy Spirit. There was no emotion involved. Um, I didn't feel anything. It was just, it was just a normal like transformation of, of existing. You know, um, you knew something was different. You did know something was different about yourself. But it ain't nothing you feel. There's no emotion involved when I receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is the most important thing that happened to me. Because without the Holy Spirit, you have nothing. The other churches, they, it's like they program, it's like a program, you know? And that's now how the Holy Spirit is. You can't program the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you cannot program the Holy Spirit. I'm happy, I'm energetic. I'm at peace, I love myself, I love everybody. I'm free from the pain, I'm free in my finances, I'm free in my love life, I'm free in my family, I'm free in every aspect of my life because I have the Holy Spirit. And now with you, 
The Encounter with God. Live stream service with Bishop Joshua. Amen. Good morning. God bless you all. Those who are here in the church, those who are at home, let us talk to God. Please close your eyes. Jesus, name above all names, powerful Savior. Glorious God, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living world. Powerful Savior, powerful Savior, glorious God, glorious God. Let us say, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God is with us, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. Blessed you pronounce the name of Jesus, when you call upon the name of Jesus, heaven is open for you. When you pronounce the name of Jesus, God the Father, hear us. God the Father, answer us. That's why every prayer has to be done in the name of Jesus. Every petition, supplication, have to be done always in the name of Jesus. The name that the power was given on earth, in heaven, even under heaven, under the earth, every tongue shall confess every knee shall bow that Jesus Christ is the Lord the Son of God as you are singing you are praying you are pronouncing the name of Jesus miracles are happening lives are being transformed because you are talking about the powerful name of Jesus. Jesus, name above all names, powerful Savior, glorious God. Amen. to sing and say Jesus, 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 name above all name, name above all name, powerful 
Savior. Glorious God. Emmanuel. God is with us. Blessed Redeemer. Lord, you are the blessed redeemer, and today you can redeem the lives of these people. Today, no one, nobody will leave this place as they came. This person came here in a situation that they need your help. Yes, Lord, they need your hand, and I pray to you, Holy Spirit, that you may that life is here today that you may transform lives here today as these people came here to see you you are also here to see them transform their lives change their situation oh God of the Bible oh God almighty I am praying to you I am asking you show yourself Jesus, show yourself, show your power. Let this person know and see that you are the same, the same God of the past. You did in the past. You are able to do nowadays, coming to transform lives. Please be silent now. Let me pray for you. My Lord, if I could, if I could, I would transform the life of this person right now. Because there is this person that cannot take it anymore. There is this person here today whose life is so, so upside down, a complete life. A fake life. How many people, Lord, to forget their problems? Use drugs, substances, alcohol to flee from the reality that is there. A life that is fake, that is not real. But I pray to you, O oh Lord, because you... You have a new life for this person. You have a brand new life for this person. So Holy Spirit, my God, work inside of them. They are going to tell you they are all matters. But I ask you, my Father, change their lives. Change their situation. Don't let, do not allow anybody to step out of this place, this sanctuary, with the same life. No, my Lord. Something has to happen inside of this person's life. Something has to happen inside of this person's brain, soul, and heart. Jesus, Jesus. When this person steps out of this church today, for the rest of this Sunday, they have to be transformed. There is this person watching us 
on the Living Faith Network, on Facebook, YouTube. There is this person watching us from the hospital, prison, from this dark room. Lord, something must happen inside of this person today. So I ask you, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my friends, wherever you may be, here in the church or at home, wherever you may be, let us pray together. Everybody say after me, Jesus, this is my prayer request. This is my situation. Tell him, this is my situation. So lift your hands high now and talk to God. Lift your hands and pray to Him. The Lord hears your prayer. Raise your hands to the Almighty and speak to Him. Yes, Lord, I am sure you listen to their prayers, to their voice, and the answer comes from you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, together we say, Amen. The Lord said, For I am the Lord who heals you. In other words, what doctors, physicians, therapists, medications cannot do. He said, I am the Lord who heals you. Who heals you from what? Whatever disease, whatever problems. He said, I am the Lord who heals you. And he is the healer. And he is going to heal your body. Amen. So if you have the bread, you have the water, get it in your hands. The bread and the water. We are going to pray now this strong prayer. What is a strong prayer? Strong prayer is when we go to the root of the problem. You are aware and used to prayers like religious prayer. When people already know what to say, what they want to say. However, a strong prayer is a prayer that we shake the foundations of your problem. Strong prayer is when we shake the foundations of your problems. When we go to the roots. It's not a prayer of intersection. It's not a prayer to give thanks, a thanksgiving prayer. A prayer of worship? No. But this prayer is a prayer to shake the foundations of the problems. And right now, we are going to pray this strong prayer, as he said, For I am the Lord who heals you. He is the Lord that heals you, and he shall heal your body. Amen? If you do not have the bread... We are going to serve you a piece of bread every Sunday. Based on the Lord's prayer, we are blessing the bread. We are blessing the water, the Lord's prayer. Hold it in your hands. Close your eyes. Let us pray now this strong prayer. Hold it in your hands. Close your eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit that causes diseases, the spirit that is causing this disease, this cancer, the spirit that is causing this diabetes, this health problem, 
The spirit that is causing this infirmity, this cancer, pneumonia, I rebuke now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke now this disease. I rebuke right now this cancer. This person that suffers from this gastritis, from this pneumonia, coronavirus, this virus of HIV, this pestilence, this plague in this life. Yes, in Jesus' name, I rebuke now this evil spirit of addictions, crack, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, a spirit of depression. This person suffers from depression. This person is always depressed. This person suffers from anxiety. I rebuke the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of depression, insomnia, the spirit of panic attacks. This person suffers from these panic attacks. I rebuke all panic attacks, suicidal thoughts. This person suffers from these suicidal thoughts. In the name of Jesus Christ, be rebuked right now. Oh, yes. Be rebuked right now. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to disappear, to leave this body, to leave the soul of this person. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say after me in Jesus' name. All diseases, all infirmities, in Jesus' name, say disappear now. In Jesus' name. Raise right now this bread, this water. Let us together pray the Lord's prayer. Me and you together, let us pray the Lord's prayer. Say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and my life forever and ever. Eat now a piece of this bread. Eat now a piece of this bread and drink the water and be healed. Yes, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healthy. Be healthy. The Lord heals you. The Lord Jesus heals your body. He delivers you from all addictions. This back pain. Drink your water and do what you could not do. Yes, move your body. Search for the pain. Because the Lord is your healer. And the Lord heals you from all evil. Receive the healing, the blessing, the power upon your life. And tonight, you are going to sleep like a baby. Oh yes, tonight you are going to sleep like a baby. Because the Lord is your healer, your provider. In Jesus Christ's name, together we say, Amen. Amen. Have a seat, please. If you have a testimony of this water, maybe you are new in this church, you are new in this ministry, and you are asking yourself, why drinking water? Why eating a piece of bread in the church? This is not a snack or a drinking. This is an action of faith. When we use our faith, the Lord blesses us. Amen? I pray for your healing that the circumstance will change. Let us sing. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee. I pray that the fear inside 
I do flee. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray that I break through. I pray that I break through. What do happen today? What happened today? I pray miracles of your life. I pray miracles of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak the name of Jesus over you. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting. In your hurting. In your sorrow. In your sorrow. I will ask God to move. I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven. In desperation, I'll seek heaven. I pray this for you, my friend. I pray this for you. I pray for your healing. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Would happen today. I pray miracles of your life. I pray miracles of your life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus. my friend, carry on, why did you stop? Can't I have a private conversation? Oh my gosh. I pray for your healing. How are you? The circumstances will change. Coming to me here. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Always in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Your name? Melinda Wafer. Miss Melinda, mm -hmm. tell us your story. Does I just bless this water? Does it work? It definitely works for me. Why do you say definitely work for me? In more than one instance. The Lord has healed me of something that the doctor said I could not be healed of. The doctor said? No, no cure. How many doctors? Many, many. I can't even remember how many. But one of the doctors is... But when you say many, more or less than 10? I'll say less than 10. Listen, we are always between two words. The word of God... And the word of the doctors, the lawyers, the physicians. We don't discredit the word of the doctors. We never say stop going to the doctor. We never say don't listen to your doctor. On the contrary, we always say have a checkup. At least annual checkup. If you don't know your body, you cannot treat your body. However, when they say to you no and no and no, remember that here you have yes and yes and yes. So many doctors told you that there was no healing for you. Yes, there was no cure for the bulging disc that I had between my fourth and fifth vertebrae and also no cure for COPD which both I suffered with for about 10 years. 10 years. So how bad was the COPD? The COPD was so bad, I could almost do nothing. Um, walking, I couldn't clean my home, I couldn't cook, stand, and wash dishes, even take a shower. I would be Simple, totally out of, out of breath. Simple, basic things you could not do. Out of breath, and pressure and pain in my chest. You could not breathe? It was a struggle, struggle, very short breath. And the harder I tried to breathe, the more the pressure would build in my chest. The more I would cough, the more pressure would build. And it was a vicious cycle. The more I coughed, the more it hurt. 
the more the pressure, the shorter the breathing. And in your mind, you had the I words was scared. of and the words of the doctor that said no, no cure. No cure. How many pills a day? I was taking about. I had other issues too, uh, health issues like diabetes, um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So how many pills a day? About fifteen. Wow. Did you hear that? 15 medications a day. Your house was a pharmacy. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And I didn't like it at all. I, How I did you it. use your faith? What has God done for you? My faith, I had to allow myself to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. I had to revolt and accept what I knew but I wasn't living, and that is that I'm a child of the Most High God, and he loves me. He don't want me to suffer, and he saw how sad I was, and I just believe one day it's going to happen, and believe it or not, it just happened like that. One day it just dawned on me. I was going to the uh, chain of prayers for healing. I was drinking the three sips of water every day. Sometimes I put it on my sponge when I take a bath, and it just happened one day, there were no more symptoms. No more? I just woke up one day and I noticed, I was like, hey, I don't feel the pressure. I don't, I don't feel any pain. I, I started sweeping. I didn't lose my breath. And uh, one of the biggest things was I like to cook. So I cook in cast iron skillets, old school. So I picked up the skillet and I realized I wasn't in pain when normally if I picked up the cast iron skillet, I would be in bed for about three days. Really? I would be literally in bed. I could barely walk from my bed to my bathroom and back. What do you have here? Just for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is actually a picture of the newspaper when I was healed here about 10 years ago from the disc in my back. And again, I was doing the chain of prayers for healing on Tuesdays. And one day I just noticed I was, I was at work and I didn't feel any pain. Normally a certain time of day I would get up and stretch and walk because of the pain. But I just noticed it wasn't there anymore. Disappeared. It totally had disappeared. Healed from this pain. Over 10 years now. And no more no. COPD. No more COPD. Now that was recently. That was in this past November. And I, I found uh, a universal church new in my neighborhood. I used to live here on the southwest side, now I'm on the southeast. So I was driving down the street, I saw the church. I was in such shock and such excitement. I just did a U-turn at the next meeting <laughs> and I went back to see, was this for real? Is this really right in my neighborhood? And after attending maybe three weeks, I was healed of the COPD, and I believe it was because I attached my faith to my prayer when I drank the water that one day it's just going to happen like it did before. Great is your faith. Amen. All the best for you. God bless you. The water worked for her. She used her faith and was blessed by the Lord. Amen. When she said the chain of prayer is the prayer that we do consistent without interruption. Do a chain of prayer. It worked for her. It shall work for you as well. A family that prays together. We are going to pray for our family. Yesterday, listen please. I was talking to someone who had a serious problem in the family. We don't disclose here people's business. Whatever you tell us, we do not disclose from the pulpit. But I was advising this person what I want to advise you. Always I say the same. Do not fight against your family. Fight for your family. This person said, I have a beautiful job. I make a good amount of money. But inside of the house, we have this and this and this and that problem I cannot talk about. 
I made this person understand something. And this is what I want you to understand. If you make a lot of money, you have a beautiful home, a beautiful job, business, house, car. But if you do not have a family, listen up. You are the most miserable person on earth. No, I'm not miserable. I have money. Listen, maybe the richest man on earth, I don't know his name or her name, maybe he doesn't have a family. He has money to buy the entire world in a blink of an eye. But because he doesn't have a family, I didn't say a house. Anybody can have a house. I'm talking about a home. A sweet home. Not everybody that has a house has a home. A home is a place of peace, respect, love. You feel good to be inside. How many men stay up late drink, drinking because when he goes home, he wants to find the wife, the children sleeping. How many people leave the house early in the morning, it's still dark, unnecessarily, only because he does not want to meet the people in the house. But when you have a home, you can say home, blessed, not just sweet, but home, blessed home. You have peace with your husband, your wife, your children. And the blessing of the couple goes upon the children. By the way, we have here every Thursday, the love therapy. The love therapy for your love life. Don't curse yourself. Loneliness is a curse. He said it's not good for a man to be alone. But Bishop, I'm not alone. Under my roof, we have a bunch of people. It's not a family. It doesn't mean you have a family. People who live in shelters, they also have a lot of people together, but it's not a family. People who are in prison, they have a lot of inmates around, but it's not a family. Family is a blessing given by God. Family is a blessing given by the Lord. And you need to have a, a family that builds a home, a blessed home. And we are going to pray to change the house into a home. Stand, please. If you have some pictures of your family, let us change this house into a home. Let us change this house into a home. If you have family members with you, like your spouse, hold the hands together. If you have your family, your sister, your brother, your son, your daughter, somebody of the same family, hold the hands together. Let us pray for this family now. Oh Jesus, you are father and you are son. And the church is the wife. So we pray for this family to be together. This person doesn't have a family, doesn't have a home. What is happening is this, my Lord. They fight like dogs and cats. There is no a healthy conversation. They don't have a healthy conversation. They just fight one against the other. There is no union in this family. They are one against the other. Mother against the daughter. Father against the son. Daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. There is no peace together. But I ask you, Lord, bring this family together. I ask you, Lord, transform this family. There is this wife today, she is alone because the husband left her. Oh, he doesn't come to church. There is this wife, 
she is alone. There is this husband, he is alone because the wife is not with him never. Oh Holy Spirit, bring this family together. Prayer can do it all. So we pray, this is our prayer, save this house. This is our prayer, save this family. So I ask you Lord, and I present each one of them to you. To the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Save this family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please have a seat right now. Amen. Do you have your Bible on you? Do you? Talk to me, people. So take your Bible, open your Bible, the book of Matthew chapter 24 to help you to find if you have the semi bible use the study bible it's page 1341 the number of the page is 1341 Matthew chapter 24 let us meditate today on the word of God on the word of God future darkness one Day the sun will not shine in the sky, and many will say it has faded away in darkness. In darkness. One day tomorrow will be no more. It will only be cry. That we will be heard in darkness. Then heaven will fade away, and the earth never the same. Allah. Like the two tsunamis. The sea will surpass the shore. Judgment on all. Judgment on all. The great and small. The great and small. The sound of cries of fear. The sound of the cries of fear will spread. Will spread. In darkness. My friend, we approach in this end. My friend, we are approaching in this end. And our Lord Jesus. And our Lord Jesus. Yes, we return. Yes, we return. Just as it's written. Just as it's written. Listen, there is no better day than today. There's no better day than today. To give, to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Your life to, to the, the Lord Jesus. Who waits your heart? 
Arise, is coming to him and give. Arise, come to him and give a chance to save your soul. Alas, don't let your heart to suffer more. The pain of being. Of being darkness. I'm going to show to you this video. Today we are talking about the end of the age or the end of the world. Today we are talking about the signs, the signs of the end. Listen to me, please. Listen to me. How do you call this season when you see that the leaves fall, the trees withered? How do you call it? Fall. When the weather changes and it becomes cold, how do you call it? When the weather changes again and becomes hot, how do you call it? Which means that we know the signs. The signs of the weather. If you leave your house in the morning, the clouds are dark. The clouds are full, are dark. What do you say? It's going to rain. You grab your umbrella. Because we go by the signs, we see the signs. Jesus is returning. Jesus is coming back. But Bishop, how can we know Jesus is coming back? We see the signs. We see the signs that Jesus is coming back. I want you to attentively watch this video let us watch together this video and then we are going to read here Matthew 24 let us take a look it's all happening so quickly never before have we been so close to the end We are here this morning to update you on the doomsday clock and our concerns about the challenges posed by man-made threats to our existence. That's why the clock has been moved forward. The moment is serious. Tell me how else can we tell people where we're, where we're at? These days, before the world can recuperate from some terrible event, another one comes along. Now, authorities in the U.S. state of Massachusetts have recorded their first case of the rare monkeypox virus. An active virus. shooter at Robb Elementary School in, in Uvalde, Texas. Quite high compared with a year ago. Political leaders have been preparing for a global catastrophe using tactics of shocking proportions. Over 20,000 underground bunkers have been constructed all over the world. Nations have prepared for evacuations below ground, as well as by air. We are living at a time when what we can call final judgment aircraft are now in operation. Planes can stay in flight for days with no need to land. And with the ability for passengers to control entire nations in the case of nuclear war. No doubt, you've noticed how time is flying. And even though the new year seems to have happened just yesterday, we're already at the halfway mark. The days are growing shorter. Though all the signs point to the end drawing closer, most people have no reaction to this fact. And it's not because they aren't able to. Just look at how they rush when they hear some sort of news. 
At gas stations across the country, prices are shooting up higher and faster than they have in more than a decade. But unfortunately, they drag their feet to give their lives to God. While caring about their soul is put off for later, they embolden the plans of the one who knows his time is short. As crianças que hoje ainda estão vivas não chegaram à fase adulta. Ah! O céu já está vazio. Os anjos já estão em pé em cima das nuvens. O seu Deus já está sentado no ar. Só vocês que não conseguem ver, mas os pés dele está em cima da cabeça de cada um. Jesus is at the door. Yet you are still in sin, in some illicit affair, in lies, in pornography, in unrighteousness. This is not the time to play around with your salvation. If you want, use this time as if it were your last chance and act quickly because he is coming without delay. Amen. Let us read here Matthew 24. Let us begin on verse 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now as he, Jesus, sat on Mount Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when you when will the signs be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And the end of the age. So the disciples came and said, Lord, show us when the end is coming. Show us when you are going to come and the world will end. And to help them, as I showed you this video, Jesus told them, verse 4, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Listen, people. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, to deceive many. Jesus was talking about religious Many religions. You know, when you walk around, you drive around, you, you see many churches, mosques, temples, pastors, bishops, deacons. How can you know who is right and who is wrong? Jesus said, take heed that nobody deceives you. How can you know if I am not a false prophet? How can you know that this ministry, the universal church, is right or wrong? You need to know the Bible. You need to know the Bible. Because if you don't know the Bible, any so-called pastor, bishop, deacon, reverend will deceive you. Will you get to your brain... Will you brainwash you? And because you don't know the scripture, you are going to be deceived. In the universal church, it's a Bible-based ministry. That's why always what I read, I show on the big screen. And I tell you, open your Bible. I don't want you to drink from my water. Hey, psst. I don't want you to use my hand to help you, to feed you. I don't want you to walk with my legs. I want you to drink from the Lord. I want you to nourish your spiritual life from the Bible. That's why I insist, read your Bible. Not just in the church. You need to know the words. 
Because we are heading to the end. Because Jesus is coming and you need to get ready. But how can you equip yourself if you don't read the Bible? Discipline yourself to read the Bible daily. Not once in a while. Begin. All of us begin by myself. We always have a device in our hands. Come on now. Every time. If there is something that you do not forget. Home is your device. Your cell phone. When you go to sleep. Your cell phone is by you. You wake up in the morning. You grab your phone. It became our accessory. Daily accessory. So the Bible has to be the same. How come I forget reading the Bible? How come I forget reading the Word? I can't. I can't forget reading the Word. It's a must. And now Jesus said, Take heed, verse 4, that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of war and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things, Jesus said, must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Listen, Jesus was talking to the disciples. Look here, please. Jesus was still here. He was already talking about the war and the rumors of war. See verse 7. For nation will rise against nation, and the kingdom against the kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquake in various places. Well, if Jesus were here today, listen, talking to the disciples, he will never say, will, will, will in the future. Jesus would say what? It is happening. Let me help you. Can I help you to understand this? Can I? Because maybe when you see things, these things on the TV, you don't realize it's from the Bible. When Jesus said will, he said will long ago. Thousand years ago. But now he's no longer saying will a nation rise against Asia. He will not, he, he's not going to say you will hear of war. He is going to say, he would say what? You hear, you see. As I showed to you, this loop, you have seen it on the TV. Look over there. When he said, you, you hear of rumors of war, now it's not rumors. It is real. It is real. It is happening. What we see over there is happening. It is no longer rumors. Have you seen it on the TV? Remember what Jesus said. He also said what? He said, for nations, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Let me show to you. You see the nations? You have seen it on the TV, but you don't realize that Jesus said that nations, kingdoms, will be one against the others. The president... The kings. Jesus prophesied. He said it would happen. What else he said? And there will be famines. Look over there. This is the situation. And maybe you say, Bishop, you are exaggerating. This is in Africa. This is this in the poorest country. Know what you see is here in America. It is not a video from Africa. We did not get it from Africa. It is here from America. If you go to the big cities, you are going to see it downtown. You see people under the bridge. 
But Jesus said, these are the signs that we are heading to the end. This is not fiction. This is not a made-up video from the internet. Like these crazy videos they post. No, this is real. This is the reality. What else he said? Pestilence. When we talk about pestilence, look over there. You see it. Monkeypox, coronavirus, pneumonia, HIV, Ebola, and other virus will always appear. Again, it is not a video from the internet, it is real. It is happening. It is striking down many countries. What else he said? He said earthquakes in various places. The earthquakes. You see when the earthquakes, it shakes. In many places, in many countries. Also here in America, you see these earthquakes. So what Jesus said, you will see, you will hear, we have seen. Haven't we? We have seen it. We have heard of it. But he said here, all this at the beginning of sorrows. You see verse 8? He said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. But Bishop, COVID-19 killed millions of people around the world. Earthquakes, war in Ukraine, Russia, misery in the U.S. People are not able to buy basic things. And you are saying, the beginning of sorrows. No, I'm not saying Jesus said. Imagine what is going to happen next. Tomorrow, listen, tomorrow, Monday, when you turn on your TV, break news, you are going to hear more of this because he said this is just the beginning of sorrows. Prepare yourself, my friends. Listen, take care of your soul. Take care of your salvation. Don't play games. Oh, Bishop, but I'm too young to die. Who told you that you need to be old to die? I went to the nursing home, and I met there a gentleman. He's 98 years old, two years to 100. He's there, he's still alive. But many people of his generation are gone. Nowadays, the parents are burying their children, young. Right now, you see that many children will not reach the old age, adulthood. Why not? Because this is the beginning of the end. I don't mean to scare you. I don't mean to terrify anybody. But I have this obligation, my duty, to tell you the truth. As they say, to put you on game, buddy. I have to. Because I don't want to go to your funeral and say, my God, did I preach salvation to this person? There in New York, two weeks ago, there was a late Sunday morning, like today, she was attending the service. Next day, I heard this news from uh, her family. She was healthy. She was on her 50s or so. And she just went out to sleep. Her bedroom, she never got up. But she was there in the service. Some people say, no, this is scary. No, it's not scary. I'm showing to you what you see on the TV, what you hear over the radio, but you don't pay attention. These are signs. Signs that Jesus is coming. Don't play games with your life. Don't play games with your time. Your time is precious. How many people will buy you, family members, co-workers, and then you got the news. He's gone. He died. She died. 
How many? And you said, but my goodness, she was with me yesterday. He was with me yesterday. I can't believe this person is gone. Because when death comes, when death knocks on your door, you cannot say, I'm busy. You cannot say, no, that's not for me. It's a wrong address. Look for somebody else. That's not my time. You cannot say so. When death hits you, whether you are working, or you are driving, or you are sleeping, or you are very well, very strong, healthy, when death knocks, oh, my friends, you have to go. But the, that's not the big issue. The main point is your soul. Where does your soul go? Because the body will lay to rest. The body will return to the earth. The spirit that is the mind, your intelligence, came from God. It returns from God. But Jesus did not come to save the body or the mind, the spirit. He came to save. But the Bible says the body goes to the earth, the spirit returns to God. But what about the soul? Where does your soul go after death? Because you are going to die one day. You are going to stop breathing one day. And your soul, where does your soul go after death? So today, today, in this very moment, surrender your soul to God. Because you already know where your body goes. Our body goes to the earth. You already know where your spirit, hey, your mind goes. Your spirit goes to God. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 says so. Get me this Bible verse, please. Look here, please. Look at me. No, they are going to display here. We can read it together. Don't, do not lose the point, the message. Listen. You already know that your body goes to the earth. You already know that your mind goes to God. But you see, look over there. It doesn't say anything about the soul. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. But something is missing there. What? Um, it talks about the dust that is the body. The spirit, that is the mind, but doesn't say the soul. We decide our soul today, this morning. This morning. Where does the body go? To the earth. The mind, to God. And the soul, only you decide. I decide my soul. Where I want my soul to go? Where do I want my soul to go? I have to decide. Ah, oh, Bishop. You're you already a servant of God. You're already a bishop. You are guaranteed. No, I'm not. I'm not. Hell is full of former pastors, deacons, bishops, ushers, church members. The ones that thought they were guaranteed, we have to save ourselves daily. I gave my life to Christ many years ago. Amen. Good for you. But today... You need to renew your vows. Today, you need to renew your life before the Lord. Forget about what you did long ago. Because since we gave our lives, see how many mistakes we have done. See how many mistakes, see how many wrongdoings. Because, my friends, we sin daily. No, Bishop, I do not sin daily. So then you have to be in heaven already, my friend. Leave this place and go to heaven because you are an angel. Oh. Oh. You are an angel, a ghost. <laughs> we sin daily. Let me prove it to you. If we do not sin with our thoughts, we sin with our mouth. When we judge, when we bad mouth somebody, it's a sin. I don't sin with my mouth. If you don't sin with the mouth, you sin with the eyes. You are not blind. You see things, you see stuff. Come on now. 
If you don't sin with your eyes, you sin with your ears. Because you let the poisoning of others, like gossip, to come to your ears. You lend your ears to the devil. It's a sin. Sin with our body, our actions, reactions, our heart, our feelings. So nobody is perfect. Hey, that's why we have to be always, look here, at the foot of the cross. And say, Jesus, have mercy on me. And say, Jesus, have mercy on me because I am a sinner. I see the signs. I see the earthquakes, the famine, the war. I don't hear rumors of war. I see the war. The human being is becoming cold day by day. You see children killing their parents. True or false? These are the signs. You see parents killing their babies. Trashing their babies. In a dumpster. As if they were trash. The human beings becoming cold and cold and cold. What do we need to do? We need to renew our life before the Lord. Renew your vow. If you are not baptized in water, get baptized in water today. But the bishop, yes, I was baptized in water long ago. But you left Jesus. You broke your vow. You breathed your covenant. Renew your baptism. Be baptized for real. We are going to serve you in a few. The Lord's Supper. The body of Christ, the bread, his blood, grape juice. Don't do it anyhow, my friends. Don't do it anyhow. Hey, do not eat or drink anyhow. Renew your life in the presence of God. Renew your vow with the Lord. Amen. Give your life for real. Forget about the past. But bishop... From time to time, I do this, I do that. Vow to God, you stop doing it today. Decide to change. Decide to change. I lie, I deceive, I bribe, I corrupt. I live a life of prostitution, fornication, humanizer, homenizer. Decide today in the presence of God to change. He, he knows you. Anything you tell him, he already knows. He just wants to hear from you, Lord, I have done this, but I want to change. I want to wash myself because when you come, I want to be ready. Do you understand it? Let me hear from you. Do you understand? The sign is visible. It will not happen. It's already here. Save yourself. But the bishop, my mother does not want. My wife does not want. Save yourself. My children, my parents do not want. Save yourself. This is yours. Salvation is individual. Let me ask you something. Two people are drowning. You and somebody else. Let me say two people are drowning. Me and you. Both of us. Me and you, who do you save first? Who? You selfish. You selfish. No, no, you are right. You have to save yourself. Praise God, I know how to swim. But when you are drowned, you forget. <laughs> Listen. You have to save yourself. Oh, but he's my friend, my baby, my son. It's like when you, you fly. They say, put the mask first on your nose and the mouth and then help the fellow passenger. Salvation is like that. You have to save yourself. My mother does not want. Mom, I love you, but I'm sorry. I can only save myself. My daddy does not want. Daddy, I love you. You are my hero, but I cannot save you. You need to save yourself. I'm going to save myself. My wife, my husband. Hey, hey, hey. Save yourself. First comes yourself. Because the signs are visible. And we cannot hide from it. Stand, please. 
Stand, please, everybody. All oh, to Jesus I surrender. All oh, to Him I freely give. I ever. Before we eat and drink from you, we want to fix ourselves before you. We want to fix what needs to be fixed. This message is not to condemn anybody. This message is not to criticize this message is not to accuse because you didn't come to accuse but to save you said I don't condemn you go and sin no more Jesus the message here today is to bring this spiritual awareness Yes, Lord. His spiritual awareness. Because we don't want you to sleep. The sleeping of death. We don't want to be unaware of the truth. And the truth is, my Lord. If we do not live a health, clean life. Before you, my God, my Father, we are going to be on our own. And when the earthquake happens, when the earthquakes, when the war breaks out in our neighborhood, in our city, when the virus, the pestilence, the plagues strikes the earth, we are not going to be able to say, save me, Lord. I am not aware of this. You made the disciples aware. And in our generation, it is happening, Lord. We just want to prepare ourselves. We don't want to be here in darkness. No, my Father. We just want to please you. We just want to live according to what you want. Oh, Holy, Holy Spirit, save souls here today. Disperse a thought because she gave her life many years ago. This person thought he got baptized in water, he's guaranteed. No, my Lord, we have to be on the same way. You said that those who last endure to the end will be saved. We need to endure. 
We need it to last until the end. To be saved. Oh Lord my God and the Savior. Our Savior God. Come to strength this person. Come to help this person to be serious about his salvation. Because we are serious about our job, about our business. We are serious about our family, married, about our journey, our plans, our projects. But not so often we are serious about our soul, our salvation. My friend, give your soul to the Lord. Decide to go to heaven. Decide today to go to heaven. Yes, you know where your body goes. You know your body shrinking day by day. You know we are aging day by day. You know that. You know your mind will go back to, to God. Decide where your soul goes right now. Right now, decide, oh Lord, I decide to go to heaven. I decide to be with you, Lord. I decide to be only with you. Oh Lord, the signs are visible, they are real. Oh Lord, I decide to be with you. Help me to change, help me to be a new person. Go ahead, you lift your hands, all of us, lift our hands, we lift our hands to you, Jesus, and we say, take my life, take my soul in your kingdom, I want to be taken by you, not by the devil, tell him I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven, I want my soul to be with you eternally. Surrender your soul to the Lord. Go ahead. Jesus forgives you yes he does he takes your sins to the deepest of the ocean he takes your sin yes to the deepest of the ocean and the Lord Jesus 
He gives you a new name. A new name. He gives you a new life. Receive now this communion with Jesus. I am not saved through what I do. Through the works that I do. I am not saved by my works. I am saved if I live according to the word. You are not saved just because you stepped today inside of the church. Or because you have been a religious person for years. No. You are saved today if you renew your vows, your life. Oh Jesus, when we eat and drink, renew your church. Renew their lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The servant of God will come to serve you. Please do not eat or drink if you don't want to have this life with Jesus. Commitment. This is not a breakfast or a snack. This is something serious. Anybody can take a piece of bread, juice, and drink anyhow. It does not bring you closer to God. What brings you closer to God is when you say, what I'm eating, drink is serious. Let me eat and drink from the Lord and have a communion with him. Amen. Please, assistants, let us now serve the blood of Jesus, the communion. Let us serve now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood. It's your blood who took my place. Who took my place in redeeming sacrifice. In redeeming sacrifice. And washes me. And washes me. Whiter than the snow. Whiter than the snow. Than the snow. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. God's precious. God's precious. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. It's your blood that cleanses me. The blood of Jesus cleans us. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood. It's your blood that took my place. That took my place. In redeeming sacrifice. In redeeming sacrifice. And washes me. And washes me. Whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Than snow. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, God's precious, God's precious sacrifice, sacrifice. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, God's precious, God's precious sacrifice, sacrifice. Raise now the piece of bread, O oh Lord. We are going to eat now. Transform this bread into your flesh. And those who are weak, strengthen them. Those who are down, 
lift them up. Those who are far from you, bring them closer. And let this person have a communion with you. We bless it into your flesh. The flesh of Jesus. Amen. Eat now the body of Christ. Receive spiritual strength. No more weaknesses, sicknesses in your body. The body of Christ is inside of you. Hallelujah. Raise now the cup. The cup of salvation. The cup of a new covenant in his blood. Lord, just one drop of your blood upon us is enough to purify and to save us. Hallelujah. I bless in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Everybody to say thank you, Jesus. Drink now the blood of Jesus. Leave just one drop. Leave one drop behind. Drink and leave one drop. Raise the cup once again. And say after me, Jesus, I want to have your blood. The blood that was shed on the cross always upon me. The last drop you pour upon your head now. And you have the blood of Jesus upon you. The blood of Jesus upon us. Worship the Lord. Yes, let us worship Him. This is the moment to worship the Lord. He has cleansed us. Jesus has cleansed us. We are cleansed by the Lord. Jesus has cleansed us. Just worship. Just give yourself in adoration. I love you, Jesus. I adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus don't close the door don't close the door for us we are here do not close the door for us Jesus we are here worshiping you praising your name oh I adore your name oh Jesus I praise you Tell Jesus how much you love him. Tell Jesus how much you adore him. Receive his Holy Spirit. You who are in the hospital, at home, the first time you see us on the TV, over there in your house, in your bedroom, receive the presence of God. Receive the Spirit of the Lord. He embraces you. Hallelujah. He empowers you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, Holy Spirit. I love you. I adore you, Jesus. You are my Father. 
you are my God. My word is unlimited. My words are not enough to say how much I love you. To say how much I love you. To express my gratitude. My words are not enough. But I praise your name. But I worship you. But I adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, my Lord. goes before me he'll never leave me cause I am not alone I am not alone Jesus goes before me he'll never leave. say I am not alone I am not alone somebody just say of God he has received the presence of God he empowers you Jesus strengthens you be strengthened by the Lord and we praise your name somebody to praise the Lord somebody to praise the Lord Jesus free your hands and praise the Lord we praise your name, we worship you, we adore you, our Lord, our Father, our Savior, we praise the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. Listen, more than your body, more than your career, more than your success, your future, invest in your salvation. Because everything else is temporary. Everything else is temporary. Like a vapor that disappears. The only thing eternal is salvation. Whether with God or in the lake of fire. Invest in your soul. Take care of your soul more than anything else. The other things are needed. The other things are important. But salvation is a must. Amen? Please be seated right now. We are going to pray for your finances. I'm going to pray for the tithe givers. The scripture says, actually it's a question. Who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? Listen. Who has given much, so much to God that God has to pay back? Look here, many times a person says, I don't return tithes 
I don't give you money to the church. You are right. Don't give you money to the church. I don't give you offering. I don't give away. That's right. Don't give away. But when it comes to tithes and the offering, we are not giving anything away. We are not helping or give a tip to God. Because he says, who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? For everything comes from him and exists by his power. Nothing that you give to God, listen, you are giving. You are just returning because everything belongs to him. Whether you have today a dollar or a million belongs to him. Belongs to him. We came naked and we go naked. No, Bishop, when somebody is born, the parents give you the clothing. Came from God. But we came naked. When we die, we go naked. If somebody does not prepare the body, you cannot dress up yourself. So, everything that we put on the altar is already his. This is the beauty of tithe. Tithe is not a payment. Tithe is a return. When you return the tithe to the Lord, you are just giving what is already his. When you take any amount as an offering, don't be proud of yourself. Today, I'm giving $10 or $1 million. It's already his. Money cannot buy or bribe God. It's already his. He is the owner of all gold and silver. It's already his. You who are going to give 10 or 100 this morning, it's already his. When you go to the machine to swipe your card, it's already his. You brought this, this amount as the first fruit, the tithe, it's already his. Amen? All that we need to do is to obey his word because what he has to give me is a way greater than what I may give it to him. So prepare your offering right now. Go ahead. Prepare what is already his. Prepare this offering, what is already his. Whether a dollar or ten dollars or a hundred or a million. Or you who say, I don't have anything to give. I don't. He knows you. God knows everything, my friend. He saw Nathanael under the tree. He saw you today coming to church. He knows. But if you have prepared this offering, let us pray before we give. We always pray for your tithes, for your offering. And today we are praying to remove the shame. He said, my people shall never be put to shame. Unemployment is a shame. Yes, housing problem is a shame. Going homeless is a shame. God has the best for you. The best. He came to give you the best. Hold now your envelope of your offering. Hold the tithe. You are going to give you my card. Hold the card. Let me pray for you. Close your eyes. And you who are at home, you can prepare your offering and call the number you see on your screen. We have over there pastors, pastors' wives that will help you step by step on how to give and how to be blessed. All right, close your eyes. In Jesus' name, O oh Lord, I bless right now the lives of the tithers, the tithe givers. And I ask you, my Father, that you may prosper their lives. You are asking, who has given me that I needed to pay back. In other words, you are not owing anything to anybody. Everything was created and existed by your power. So Holy Spirit, remove the shame. This person has to be without shame. Prosper, my Lord, this person in a way that they will have to give and never to beg. No, my Lord. 
let this person have enough to spare. Prosper thy people, that thy name shall be glorified. I bless the faithful tithers. I bless the sowers. They are going to sow a seed offering. Let there be prosperity, abundance. Lift both your hands to heaven. Bless, my God, the works of their hands. When this person is working, when this person is paying, making transactions, businesses, signing contracts, remember this person in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bring now the tithes, the envelope you're offering, put inside of the treasure box. Use the machine to make your heavenly transaction because you are not giving to men, you are giving to the Lord. Go ahead, bring the tithes, bring this offering, present it to the Lord, and the Lord shall bless your life. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Amen. If you need the tithe envelope for this week, for tomorrow, for next week, Sunday, the assistant will give you a tithe envelope. All that comes to your hand, you separate the tithe and you return to God what is his. Those who are watching TV, you can also use this number on your screen and return the tithe. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shiny in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. And love to sing glory, glory, glory. Everybody stand, please. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Receive peace inside of your heart. I bless you with peace. I minister. Peace upon your life. I minister peace upon you. To see you high and lifted up. Shiny. Hello, friends. Did you enjoy the service today? The message? What, uh, what stood out for you in this message? The message the testimony, the prayers. Well, you can participate in a service like this in one of our churches. We have the Universal Church all over USA. In majority of these states, we have the Universal Church. Go to one of the churches and join us in person. I know you enjoyed it live here on the network. However, I invite you to join us. 
in one of our locations and the pastors will be praying for you. If you are in a city, in a state where there is no universal church, you can watch us again next week here on the same channel. However, every Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning, we have this special service. We named it as Gathering of Faith and Miracles. May the God of the Bible bless all of you. Thank you for watching us and also thank you for your support. When you make your donation, your seed offer, your gift of any amount, we send it to you as a gift. One of these books that also has messages like the one that you heard today in our service. God bless you. See you next time. I'll take care of you. It was a Thursday um, and the pastor was there and he tells you what's, what's going on. I said, I, 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 